Hey everybody, Chris here with Chris Cross Crafts. Today, we're gonna to take a look at Aura Mask. I use Aura Mask a lot in my shop and it has transformed how I'm able to do some of my carvings coming off the CNC, especially those that I'm gonna to have to do some paint or some stain to the areas that were pulled or carved away. And it doesn't matter if you have a CNC or not, this works equally well if you're using a hand router or if you're even hand carving, the principle's still the same. The only step's gonna be is how you're removing the wood from your material. So you want to see how this works, hold tight, I'll show you some of the processes, some of the materials, and some of the setup that you need to get this thing rolling in your shop, and it will be a game changer in yours, just like it's a game changer in mine. Okay, so here are some of the things you're going to need if you're going to use an Aura Mask for your next project. Obviously, you're going to need Aura Mask. This happens to be the Aura Mask 813, and I bought this at Klingspore's Woodworking Shop. They've got it in a couple of options. You can get it in a 5-pack of 12x12s, or you can get it in a 12 inch wide by 10 foot roll. Uh, this happens to be the sheets. They're quite handy for small projects and obviously you can cut them up. Uh, so some of the things you're gonna need obviously is the Aura Mask itself. Uh, next thing you're gonna need is a project that you're gonna carve on or cut on. And this happens to be a piece of 3 8 Baltic birch. Now I have gone ahead and prepped this. I sanded it of course with Klingspore sandpaper and I have uh, applied a two coats of the Zinser Seal Coat. Now. The benefit of the seal coat, or any sealer for that matter, whether it be regular shellac or lacquer, is that it gives that surface a good seal so that whenever you do carve it away and you apply your stain and or your paint after the fact, what that does is it helps prevent that from bleeding under the aura mask. Some of these woods are very soft and they will absorb that stain or that color, and that's the last thing you want. You want nice, clean, crisp lines. And doing a seal coat first, and then applying your uh, aura mask after is a huge hand, help in hand. So I've done that already, got that taken care of. Uh, one other thing you're going to need is a some kind of leveler. This happens to be a set of three that I bought. I got this happens to be the four inch. I like this size. It's great for this kind of application. Uh, these are little levelers. They're designed for leveling out in, uh, wood filler, body filler, things like that. This, but it works great for pressing out the air pockets and getting everything nice and flat onto your work surface. Uh, another thing you're going to need, maybe, in my case, this, this piece of plywood's a little bit warped, so I've got some double-sided tape here. Um, this is going to really help to keep everything tight to the table while I'm carving it away. Another thing you might need, now I happen to have this in a, is a box cutter. Uh, you can use a standard utility knife like this, or if you've got just the blade, you can go with the blade as well. You may not need much of it, but you will need it if you're cutting the pieces of the ore mask into smaller sizes, depending on your project. So, in this case, I'm locked and loaded. I got my tool belt ready to go. Now, obviously, you're going to need some kind of design. Now, in this case, I'm using a CNC. So, I've got this programmed, and on my thumb drive, I just have to load it up and run it. If you're doing hand carving, for instance, if you're using a pattern, you can lay your pattern on this and apply the ore mask over top of the pattern, or vice versa. Lay the ore mask down and your pattern over the ore mask. Either way, the principle is still the same. You're going to hand carve it away or hand route it away and whatever is left will be what you're going to paint or stain. So in this case, like I said, we're using the CNC. This happens to be the Axiom AR8 Elite. And so we're going to get this thing set up. Let me get this dialed in, held down, and we'll come back and we'll start the process and you can see how I apply the order mask and get ready to carve this out. Okay, first thing first, let's get that liner off that order mask. And you can see how quickly that little spreader does a great job for getting those little pockets out. And I did cut that a little short, so I add strips to the side later. For now, let's get that double-sided tape on there, and you can see that painter's tool does a great job for that. Pressing that on, and the little point of the box blade, peel that liner right away. Perfect little tip. Put 125 pounds of my body weight on there to make sure it's all fastened to the table. Set my Z, and we are off to the races. And you can see that that Elite makes real short work of this. And that 60 degree V bit from Amana, uh, that happens to be the uh, Spectra coated 60 V, and you can see it just does such a clean job. That's, I mean, that's my go-to bit for I would say about 90 plus percent of my uh, lettering. Uh, larger letters, obviously, I could use a different bit, different angle, uh, but for most of my stuff like this, that 60 is the way to go. Unless I'm doing really, really fine engraving. Uh, then I might use a 30 or something else, but that 60 is a good job. And you can see we're about through with that. Got plenty of that film shaving all over the top of the surface. And done. 
Now let's get over to the staining table. And I'm using the General Finishes Lamp Black for this. And, you know, I, normally I would spray or, or use an aerosol because it's just fast. Uh, but for this case, I wanted to show you even just wiping and brushing in these little bitty letters, how well this aura mask does to protect that surface and really helps people like me who could really care less about being neat and tidy uh, to, you know, get the job done. And I'll, I'll use this quite a bit because I am lazy. I don't like painting. Painting is probably the thing I like least. And you can see that little acid swab. I'm just kind of dabbing it in, not even trying to be neat with it. And I'm getting it uh, all into the little mixture. All the little nicks and crannies are covered and that the uh, everything's fully got stain in there. And you can see when I wipe that away, I was a little aggressive in a couple spots and I did a little damage. Not necessarily damage, but I did peel that ore mask away. So in those real fine things, you have to be cautious. Because I'm making these as a display for four stores, I went ahead and cut those to size. And I originally was going to use that French curve to create a nice curved transition so that, you know, what was peeled away, it would be, yeah, give it a little detail. Well, I didn't choose a good enough French curve. It looks more like a straight cut than a curve, but that's okay. And this stuff was on there probably four days. Normally, I put it on, cut it, stain it, and, and it comes off usually within a day or two. And it was pretty cold in the shop, so some of it was a little bit difficult to get off. Not too bad, though. And now I'm using the weeding tool. This is a, definitely a must-have if you're going to do a lot of this. It is very helpful for getting a lot of the real small, detailed areas cleaned off. And it does uh, make, it a lot, make it a lot easier if you have that. Dental picks work. Just be cautious on those because the dental picks will dig in. But the weeding tool must have as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's turning out to look pretty dang good if I do say so myself. What do you think? Let me know below. Okay, so I did want to take a second and talk about the weeding tool itself. Um, if you look at the weeding tool, you can see that it's got that hook shape on the end. And it looks like a sharp point, almost like a dental pick. But what you'll find is that it's a sort of a blunt uh, end. It, it is sharp, but it's, it's more blunt. It doesn't come to a true point. So that enables you to, in these little areas, get in here and dig away. So, um, you know, when you're looking for a weeding tool, you know, you can find them at any of the craft stores or sign shops. Uh, but those work really well. They do work better than the dental pick. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a, a weeding tool to uh, pull that up. Okay, well, there you go. Hopefully, this was helpful to see how I use this in my shop, but more importantly, how you could use it in yours to transform how you do signs and different carvings and things like that. With minimal tools, you can get it done. Simple razor blade or box cutter, little weeding tool, little dental pick set, something along those lines. And as far as finishes go, just about anything works. Works fantastic with water-based or oil-based, or even using it with lacquers or enamels. You do need to be a little cautious with those some of the stronger solvent finishes, as that could melt the film if you're not careful. So be, be the little test area if you need to. Well, hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, like, subscribe, ding the little bell, and uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. I really hope Kling Sports Woodworking Shop likes this. I thought, well, now that I got a local source for this and I don't have to go everywhere to find it, this would be a nice little thing for them to maybe help their customers see how they could use it too. Well, uh, this is Chris with Criss Cross Crafts. And I got plenty of work to do, so pitter-patter, let's get at her, and we will see and see you later. <clears throat> okay, so. I hope that'll be a nice display, and I'm canceling that one and doing it again because hopefully it's hopefully, hopefully, hopefully about 18 times, and hopefully I won't say hopefully again. Out there in case the other one sucks, take 532. Now it can change your shops.
does a great job um, and and is fantastic. And 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 you're so dumb. And 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 ah, slow and steady wins the race.